And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey, do you like to eat? I obviously do. Do you like to cook? I do. Do you like to cook in a kitchen where you have to put orders out very fast? Well, Gordon Ramsay does, but I don't know that that would be fun. But that's the theme here of pressure cooker. You're in a kitchen and everyone in the restaurant wants their orders now and you need to hurry. This is a speed style game in which players are going to be searching through piles of, of tiles and trying to make different meals. Let's examine. Okay, in this game you're going to be scoring in four different sections on your board. Uh, red, green, yellow, and blue. Those are like four different sections of the restaurant. you got to make everybody happy. And you're going to be using these dials. These dials are not very good. You can see they're basically spinners. They're also very hard to see. There's a way someone put on Board Game Geek on how to fix them, but either way, you got to be really careful when you're scoring. Now, at the end of the game, your final score is going to equal the score on your lowest dial. So if I had 20, 25, 30, and 10, my final score would be 10. So you have to make sure you're working on all these dials. The game takes place over three rounds, and in each of those rounds, you're going to be serving the restaurant, and some cards are going to be placed here in the middle of the table. You'll notice that um, uh, there's two cards in these sections and three. That's because you put them out, and you look at these numbers here, and if those equal 16 or more, you're done. So this one was 8 plus 6 is 14, so we put a third card out there. So these are the different things that players are going to be making over the course of a round. Now, a round... There's a timer that's involved in a round, but you don't use the timer at the beginning. Instead, one person says go, and then all players are going to be looking through this pile of tiles. Now, you're going to be searching through this pile frantically, drawing a tile, and deciding whether you put it back in your play area, and decide whether you're going to use it or not. If you're not going to use it, you put it back in the middle, and you put it face up so other people can use it. Now, when you take a tile, you're going to say, okay, I just grabbed a tomato. You'll look up here and say, ooh, an enchilada needs a tomato. So then that is in yellow position number one. So on my board in yellow position number one, I'll put a tomato. Now, the order doesn't matter that you put all these ingredients, but you need to put all of them. You have a token that's a doubler token for the quality of the meal, a first token, but that has to go on the bottom of any particular meal. And there's all different ingredients in the middle of the table. Uh, each ingredient has a quality number on it. That's what the little three means here for the tomatoes. Some ingredients like this fish here also will give you a point, an extra point in the course of the game. Other things like this drink here, you can always add a drink to any meal. They just add to the quality of the meal. And then there's also dessert tokens, but they have to be the last one you play. Uh, when you're adding ingredients to meal, you look and see what each meal needs. So you can see pizza here needs bread and onions and meat and bacon and cheese and tomatoes. While the salad one above it needs lettuce and then five more things. What are those five things? Well, each person has their own like recipe board next to them. So I'd pick any five things here from the salad section. If it was lasagna, I'd pick any of those five things there. Sometimes like this salad here, will show you that there are two ingredients that cannot be in that salad. That person does not want eggs and tomatoes. I'm not sure what exactly is wrong with them. If you're playing the advanced game, sometimes you just, like here with soup, you put four ingredients and each ingredient is going to be worth two bonus points. Now this is gonna continue on. Everyone's gonna be uh, rushing and grabbing and yelling and screaming, or I don't know what they're doing. But at, at some point, someone's going to finish a certain number of recipes. As you finish each recipe, you're supposed to say, order up. You put a little disc of your color on top of your order that's finished, and you also put it on top of the highest number on that matching order, if there's one there. And so eventually someone will get many of those done in a round, three in the first round, four in the second round, five in the third round, and those, they'll basically end the round. But then they start a timer and everyone else has one minute to finish as many orders as they possibly can. Once that happens, you start with the first recipe. Here it's a sub and everyone shows the ingredients that they have here. You need meat and bread and three other ingredients from the sub thing. If you're correct and you put them out there, and I put my token on the highest one, I'll get seven points. 
Whoever put out second will get four points and two points in the red category. Then everyone will count up the quality numbers on all their different ingredients and whoever has the highest quality and it goes over this number here. So if I have a quality and it goes over 15, I'll get three bonus points. And then we'll go down to the burger and we'll do that and we'll go through each one and give out the points. Also adding points for some ingredients which are worth bonus points. Remembering if someone played it first, they will double the quality of that meal. Of course, if they don't finish a meal, you're knocked off and the, whoever else might have finished that same meal will move up and get more points possibly. And if you played one of these, you'll lose some points on a meal that you don't finish. After three rounds of this, the game is over. Again, we look at the dials, your lowest dial, that's your points. Whoever has the most points is the winner. Unfortunately, we have to talk about the quality of this game. I already mentioned the, the spinners and that's just really low quality. I also think the graphics aren't the best. The graphic design looks like it's from the 80s. Uh, the pictures are not that easy to distinguish. It just has a look of not, it just doesn't have a look of quality. Even these tokens that you're placing, they look like things you punch out of the board and throw away. And in here you need to keep them and use them as your pieces. It just doesn't, it doesn't have a good look. Even the, the cover just doesn't look that good. Gameplay itself, I think it could just be down as if you like games that move quickly and are speed oriented, you'll like the game. If you don't like those styles of games, you're going to hate it. And that the second half is where I am. Now I don't mind games that have a speed element to them if there's something else to counterbalance that. But in this game, sheer speed alone will win you the game. Someone who can just go around and pick stuff and put it all in their menus and, 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 and finish them quickly. The game has a sync here where it gives you a bonus of three points whoever completes the most orders. It gives you a bonus of eight points whoever is the fastest. And those eight points and three points can go in any color you want. Well, finishing quickly and adding eight points to any dial is a huge bonus. This game rewards the person who is fastest. Now you could say, well, yes, but everyone else has one minute. But if that person is super fast and finishes, they're also getting the highest of values on each of the dishes that they do. And one minute in this game isn't tremendously long. You might finish one or two more. Now I play different ways. I tried to, you know, get great big valuable meals, which is not really worth your time because it takes a lot of effort to get a few bonus points. Or try to finish as many possible meals as you possibly can which works better, but the simple fact is if you play against someone who's faster than you, you can not win. There's nothing to mitigate that, and I really dislike that about the game. Um, but again, if you're playing with somebody who's a similar speed to you, then maybe you both will have the same uh, fun and entertainment out of that. But you're just grabbing stuff and throwing it on matching piles. This game has a similar feel like, for example, Galaxy Trucker, but in Galaxy Trucker, I'm taking those tiles and building a cool spaceship and then seeing what happens to that spaceship. Here, I'm just grabbing a bunch of tiles and then, oh, you missed a tile or, oh, you got the right tile, so here's points. And then the whole dial thing is kind of Kinesia-ish, um, trying to score the most and the least. And it's really, these little dials frustrate that even more. So game components are big bleh for me. The gameplay itself is fine if you are wanting to play that whole speed element and matching different things. And again, I think even that'd be more fun if they weren't so blah looking and even samey looking as you looked at the menus. But I think some folks are going to really enjoy this. But as for me, I'm, I'm frustrated by it. Uh, a mixture of the components and then playing against someone faster than me. And even if I didn't play against someone faster than me and I played against everyone who was slower than me, then even then I wouldn't have fun because I'm just trumping them all because I'm faster. So that's pressure cooker. Dice Tower Judgment, not for me. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.